Hey everyone. So I just wanted to come back by and do another Little People Big Dream story with you that will connect us with the story of John the Baptist that is in our children's message that if you click the Advent wreath above the fireplace in our Google Classroom, you can learn a little bit more about the John the Baptist story and what that means for us today. But um, we're going to learn about how that story connects with the story of Rosa Parks. So when John the Baptist calls into the crowds to think about the things that they may not have been thinking about before and how to care for one another and how to love for one another, we are also called to do the same, to share God's message of love and the message of liberation. It should be shouted, it should be heard, it should be received. Because those who dream make way for peace and for faithfulness to spring up from the ground. And that little bit is from Psalm 85, 10 through 11. So I'm going to read you the story of Rosa Parks. This was written by Lisbeth Kaiser and illustrated by Marta Antelope. Rosa grew up near Montgomery, Alabama with her mother, brother, and grandparents. She was very little and very brave, and she always tried to do what was right. When she was young, Rosa's grandparents told her stories about slavery when Black people weren't free to live like other people. Slavery was over, but times were still hard for Rosa and her family. Black people were treated very badly and told they were not equal to white people. Every day, Rosa watched the school bus go by, taking white children to their big school. It didn't stop for her. She had a long walk to the one-room school that was just for black children. Rosa knew this wasn't right. She knew she was a regular person just as good as anyone else. And lots of times she had to make sure other people knew it too. When Rosa grew up and got a job in the city, she couldn't use the same doors, elevators, bathrooms, or water fountains as white people. She could ride the bus, but she had to sit in the back. Her life was full of rules that she knew weren't right. Rosa fell in love with a man named Raymond, who was trying to change the rules to be more fair and equal. Soon Rosa started working too, trying to get more rights for black people and help those who were treated badly. She worked day after day, even when it seemed like nothing would ever change. On her way home from the city one day, a bus driver told Rosa to stand up so a white person could take her seat. She was sick of rules that she knew were wrong. She thought, enough. She said, no. Rosa was taken to jail. She wasn't scared because she knew she was fighting for what was right. When Rosa came home that night, she talked with her friends and family about what to do. She decided to keep fighting, no matter how hard it would be. Black people all over the city heard what happened to Rosa. They thought, enough. Rosa inspired them to stop riding the buses until they changed the rules. So they walked to school and to work and to the store in all kinds of weather. Rosa traveled the country from New York to San Francisco to convince other people to join the fight. Finally, after one year, the Supreme Court decided that treating black people differently from white people on buses was wrong. The rules were going to change. It was no longer safe for Rosa to live in Alabama. She moved to Detroit and fought for fair schools, jobs, and houses for black people. She fought for voting rights, women's rights, and the rights of people in prison.
When Rosa was an older woman, she was given awards and she was told she was a hero. But she knew who she was, a regular person, just as good as anyone else. And she had work to do. So I want you to think about how did Rosa prepare the way for others? She did this big, huge thing. Um, and I wonder also how you think she learned to be so brave. I mean, I wonder like what it's like to be the first person to do something, something so big and to be brave to, to, enough to take that first step. Isaiah 40, 3b through 4 says, prepare in the desert the way for the Lord, make the road in dry lands straight for our God. Every valley should be raised up, every mountain and hill should be made flat, the rough ground should be made level, the rugged ground should be made smooth. So John the Baptist used these words um, from the prophet Isaiah to announce that Jesus was coming. His job was to prepare the way so that the people would be ready to follow Jesus. And we can also do that. So I want you to think about what are some ways that you can help prepare the way for peace in the world. And there are ways. So I, and we talk about this a lot. It's, it's all those little things that you do, that you do for the glory of God, that, that add up and that prepare the way. So I want you to remember that especially during this Christmas time, those, those things that we do to care for one another and show God's love. That's how we're preparing the way for peace in the world. And so I want you to think about the ways that you are doing it and maybe add a few. Wouldn't hurt, would it? All right, would you please join me in prayer? Dear God, even when it's scary, I want to be a peacemaker. Help me prepare the way for people to follow you to a kinder, more equal world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I will see you next week with another story.